here in the remote West Highlands of Scotland. Um, it's the middle of winter, January 2016, and uh, it has been a very wet winter, not particularly cold, uh, just wet. And one of the predictions which climate scientists have made is that uh, although many parts of the planet are warming, noticeably, noticeably so, climate change means disruption. The trend is generally that the temperatures, the global average temperatures will get warmer and they are doing so. So unlike a lot of the planet, um, we have a fairly short growing season, um, basically March till October and the rest of the time the plant life is pretty much dormant. Growing and planting trees is something I've been doing for a long time. Um, I started planting trees here in 2006, but I've been growing them for a lot longer than that, mostly in pots, but I also take cuttings from the willow trees and just plant them directly into the ground. I have a slightly unusual way of planting trees, which I've been doing for a few years now, and it does seem to work. Some might call it lazy, um, but I prefer to think of it as low maintenance and making use of waste product. Waste product I have is a mixture of cat litter and uh, the contents of the rabbit cage and the chicken house after they've been cleaned out. So it is effectively um, the raw ingredients for compost. And here I have a tree which has been growing in this pot for probably three or four years. don't know exactly because I've got so many. Um, I've been growing trees as a hobby for many, many years. And the way that I've been planting them is to literally take them out of the pot, find a suitable place on the ground where this tree is going to grow. This is an ash. Um, this is January 2016, so everything is dormant at the moment. So I shall plant this tree right here. So literally just put it on the ground and I have my uh, mixture of all different kinds of shite and uh, wood shavings and wood pellets and you just put it around the base of the tree. Oh, and there's also a bit of compost from the kitchen. Um, food scraps. This would not, this kind of compost mixture or pre-compost would not be a good idea for any food crops. Um, they don't recommend putting carnivore shite um, on food crops. Um, but for trees, seems to work perfectly well. So, I'll come back in the summertime and uh, have a look to see how this one is doing. But from past experience, I think it has a, a good chance of growing well. There's a lot of talk about carbon sequestration and storage. And uh, one of the high-tech, um, energy-intensive ways of doing that is to capture the carbon dioxide um, where it is produced in biggest quantities at coal-fired power stations and uh, somehow dissolve that into a liquid solution, not just fizzy water. Um, I, don't pretend, I don't pretend to be an expert on the exact methodology of it, but the idea is to inject it back underground into uh, places where the coal and the oil were extracted from in the first place. Um, now while that I think is worth doing, because uh, our species, our civilization, is definitely going to continue to burn coal and oil in ever-increasing quantities. A very low-tech method of storing carbon in the ground is just to pl simply plant trees. Um, when you plant them, they capture carbon dioxide out of the air. They, re they separate the carbon and the oxygen from the carbon dioxide molecule. They release the oxygen back into the air and they store the carbon in the leaves and twigs and stems. And they continue doing this um, 
if you plant a forest indefinitely. Um, each individual tree, this Scots pine for example, could well live to be three or four hundred years old. Um, who knows whether it will still be here that far into the future, who knows whether there will even be a civilization. We may well have wiped ourselves out by then, who knows. One of the neat things which plants do, um, particularly trees and perennial plants, and grasses too, really all plants, is uh, to store the carbon in the soil. And this is a complicated process involving fungi and bacteria. Um, but basically, all the waste products, all of our waste products, um, and the leaves which fall off the trees, branches, twigs, they all have the potential to add carbon to the soil. Um, there is obviously going to be some decomposition uh, when fungi and bacteria break the, uh, break the organic matter down. Some carbon dioxide is released, um, but anybody who's dug in soil uh, knows that you usually have a layer of black soil right at the top and then it will be either brown or orange or grey the further down you go. Um, and that basically indicates that, uh, that there is a lot of carbon right up near the surface of the soil. So if more people who had access to land which doesn't have trees on it um, planted them and looked after them and uh, basically contributed to reforestation, um, that would on a large enough scale make a significant difference to the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. I mean I'm thinking of you know attempting to reverse the desertification process. Um, deserts from my point of view are an amazing opportunity to capture carbon from the atmosphere and store it in the soils. As well as that you have the benefit of regulating the water cycles and uh, preventing things, you know, harmful side effects like soil erosion. Generally it's all pros and no cons. I can't think of any uh, good reason why planting forests is a bad idea. But obviously it's not a money spinning exercise. So I guess the reason why um, you know, big business doesn't talk about that low-tech solution very much is there's not a lot of money to be made in it. Um, but if we measure the uh, success of our civilization in terms of well-being and happiness rather than gross domestic product, then I would say it's a win-win.